On today's San Francisco 49ers report, we get to the latest Trey Lance trade chatter and Nick Bosa named the number one edge rusher in ESPN's edge rushing rankings heading into 2023. Today's show is presented by Manscaped. Speaking of Nick Bosa, he had 18 and a half sacks last year. If you want to clean up your sack, do so with Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash 49ers. Promo code 49ers for that deal to apply. Let's start here with the latest around Trey Lance. And this is really the look ahead for him as we're about two weeks away from the start of Niners training camp. Can you believe it's only two weeks away? This year, really, in 2023, absolutely flying by right now. So when I look at Lance, can he impress the coaches enough to unseat Brock Purdy and win the starting quarterback role? That's question number one. If he can't do that, can Sam Darnold and will Sam Darnold really outplay Trey Lance and earn quarterback too? If that's the case, what is Lance's future? We'll explore that here coming up around the corner. The areas of work I believe that Lance needs to hone in on and display the coaching staff and show them that he's actually made sizable improvements in consistent accuracy and just hitting layups. We know that he can hit the home run ball. Can he make the easy, simple throws that need to be completed for this offense to be as efficient as possible? Now, when I break down Lance's film, when I scout him, when I've watched his limited starts at the NFL level, when I went back and watched what he did at North Dakota State, these are all things that I see. There's good, there's bad. He's, of course, a really intriguing athlete at 6'4", 225. That's the prototypical size that you look for in a lot of quarterback prospects nowadays. You also look for a strong arm. He has it. His mobility has been a little bit underwhelming as far as his elite running speed, but he's mobile and at the very least a good runner. I actually like his pocket feel and his pocket mobility. I think he's had a good sense of some of the traffic around him in between the tackles when he's maneuvering inside the pocket. And here's the thing with Lance. Guy is 23 years old. You can't write him off yet after four starts in his NFL career and because he's still young. And this is a guy who just hasn't played a lot of football. That's what he needs to do to show everybody what he's capable of doing. And speaking of those weaknesses and the lack of experience, that's probably on top of the accuracy the biggest issues here. Layering throws, I believe, a little bit of a problem for him. And look, he's been banged up and injured. And there's no secret about that. And he has to measure again, the wow plays versus the layups. Now, I do want to go to this quote from Matt Mayoko on the 49ers Talk podcast. He has a good beat and a good feel for what this organization likes to do, how they think, the moves that they make, the moves that they think about making. And here's what Mayoko had to say about Lance here in a recent pod. If Trey Lance can't win the number two job, then the team's going to have some very difficult decisions to make. Even though they may like him, how much longer can they stay with him? Or does it make more sense to try to get something for him? Trey Lance may never get his chance with the Niners if Brock Purdy is healthy, stays healthy, and performs well. And I've continued to talk about this here throughout this offseason. Like, if Brock Purdy plays well, if he stays healthy, I'm not sure how Lance sees the field. Now, if Brock Purdy has a setback with that elbow injury, Trey Lance lights the world on fire. I'm so intrigued by what he can do. For those of you out there who are saying Trey Lance is a bust if he doesn't work out and perform well throughout the preseason and training camp, cut him. Stop right now. It's not feasible. It's not realistic. Trading Trey Lance is the conversation to have because you look at the current construct of his contract, a $9.3 million cap number this year and $10.8 million cap hit in 2024. If you outright cut Trey Lance, the dead cap number is going to be somewhere in this neighborhood here of about $9, $10 million over the next two years. And the 49ers are just not going to do that when they're already paying premium dollars to multiple stars across this roster. So really trading him is the only realistic scenario here. But here's the deal. Are you paying all that money for a guy who's QB3 if Sam Darnold does beat him out? That's where it becomes a difficult decision to make for San Francisco. 
like what Matt, Matt Mayoko had said in that quote there. And if Sam Darnold beats out Trey Lance, that's a disaster for the Niners, and it's a disaster for Trey Lance. Trey Lance cannot afford to lose a backup quarterback role to Sam Darnold if he already lost the QB1 role. And if he does that, that's a hit to his confidence, that's a hit to his morale, and that's a hit to his level of respect across the NFL. He has to be able to outperform Sam Darnold throughout this training camp and preseason session. So who suits up at quarterback in week one, September 10th, Heinz Field, Pittsburgh, against the Steelers? Is it going to be Brock Purdy, Trey Lance, Sam Darnold? Let me know and drop me a name in the comment section here. Coming up next on the show, Nick Bosa ranked number one among all edge rushers in the game of football. We're going to unpack that here in just a few moments. But first, today's show is presented by Manscaped. I took a vacation and a trip down to Austin over the weekend, and it worked out well for me that I used Manscaped because it's smooth sack summer. And when I took a paddleboard out onto Ladybird Lake, I didn't have to worry about being all nasty and hairy below the waist, on my back, my chest, as well as my face, because I always got to keep it looking fresh being on camera here on the San Francisco 49ers Report. 20% off and free shipping on all of the best men's grooming products when you're playing in that summer sun. Make sure you're escaped from pubes to bum. That's right. This is the summer to keep your balls cool while still looking hot with Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming are making sure we all have a ball this summer. Performance Package 4.0 is awesome. It has everything you need to prepare that summer bod. They have built the ultimate grooming bundle for your summer grooming. Lawnmower 4.0. They have the travel bag, crop preserver ball deodorant, the boxer briefs, the most comfortable boxer briefs that I've ever worn, Shears 2.0, luxury nail grooming kit. Look, if you're not getting the dirt out from underneath your nails, you are just a grime ball out on these streets. I used to bite my nails. I no longer do it because I take care of them, because I take care of my body, because looks matter, especially if you're trying to attract a significant other out there. So 20% off free shipping, manscaped.com slash 49ers. Get hooked up today. Let's move on to Nick Bosa here. So Nick Bosa topped the list of the top edge rushers in ESPN's edge rusher rankings, how these rankings came about here. ESPN surveyed league executives, coaches, scouts, and players across the National Football League to help rank the top 10 players at 11 different positions. Nick Bosa, the number one defensive end in football, coming off of being named Defensive Player of the Year. Here is that list. Nick Bosa checking in at number one. Miles Garrett behind him. Micah Parsons at number three. TJ Watt slotting in at number four. Hassan Reddick rounds out that top five. Six through ten goes as such. Max Crosby of the Las Vegas Raiders. Brian Burns, Carolina Panthers. Matthew Judon, New England Patriots. Von Miller of the Bills. Been getting it done for a really long time. Still cracking that top 10. And then Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa's brother, at that 10 spot. Honorable mentions here, Jalen Phillips, Aiden Hutchinson, Trey Hendrickson, Khalil Mack, as well as Cameron Jordan. And the further details for Bosa here for this ranking, his highest ranking among all of the people who voted, number one. The lowest ranking, fifth. Last year's ranking, number three. Whoever voted him fifth just simply does not know ball. Bosa in 2022, 15.3 pressure rate, 48 quarterback hits, led the field by 12, and he had a league best 18 and a half sacks in the National Football League last season. High ranking NFL official on what makes Bosa special here size, strength, power, speed, quickness solid length, repertoire of moves, and a high motor. He's got it all. That's high praise right there. NFL executive on the bear. He's just so fast and twitchy. He turns the edge so well, and he has a knack to get the ball back. He seems to make a game-changing play almost every single week, and that's why at the end of last year, I sneakily thought, like, Bosa, he's not going to get MVP consideration, but given his impact to wins and losses and how he can change and alter games. He should at least be loosely in that conversation. Last two years, Nick Bosa's put up some 
crazy, insane, stupid, jaw-dropping numbers, whatever adjective you want to use, 15 and a half sacks in 2021, and you're like, yeah, it's going to be hard to duplicate that success, 18 and a half sacks in 2022. Can he beat Michael Strahan's single season sack record this upcoming season? That would be something. Now, those numbers are certainly the real deal. These numbers paint an even different and more impressive story. According to Pro Football Focus, Nick Bosa, 90.9 overall grade in 2022, run defense grade of 81.1, a pass rush grade of 90.9. He rushed the passer 508 times. He was able to tally 41 hurries, 30 quarterback hits. This is what's crazy to me. 500 pass rush snaps, 90 total pressures. Almost one in five pass rush snaps, he's pressuring the quarterback to go along with 39 stops. Nick Bosa, ladies and gentlemen, is a special player. He's a unique player. He is soon to be the highest paid defensive player in the history of the game. And this is a guy who I think is only going to continue to get better, improve, because he loves the game of football. And he's only going to continue to hone his craft and to top this list of the top edge rushers in the sport. Certainly a well-earned honor and a well-deserved honor for number 97. Nick Bosa. Look out for big things once again here in 2023. So if you think Bosa, the best edge in the NFL, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. Thanks to everybody who tuned into the show today. Do not forget to subscribe. We're going to be going live tomorrow on the 49ers Report. Make sure you stay tuned.